Here we go, folks. Um, good, e good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, April 9th. It's about 7 p.m. Tonight we have a planning and zoning uh, commission meeting. Um, we have a public hearing and a general meeting, and it's about 7 o'clock. We're here in Town Hall in room 119. So without any further ado, let's get right into the public hearing. The first on the, on the agenda is continuation of public hearing regarding landfilling and regrading application number 546 PL24-21 Shady Acres LLC at 9 Shady Acres Road. The proposal is to raise the existing residence and to construct a new 6,000 plus or minus square foot single family dwelling, construction of a new pool, patios, driveway, and parking court, retaining walls and farm related site to activities, including the regrading of the property, construction of a new septic system, and installation of stormwater management. The 2.09 plus or minus acre subject property is located on the west side of Shady Acres Road, approximately 650 feet south of its intersection with Marianne Road, and is shown on assessor's map number four as lot nine, located in the R2 residential zone. The hearing opened on, February, on March 26th, which is the day I was absent. Um, we got a memo in our materials um, dated April 2nd from Joe Canis. It goes into a couple items that are historical that go back, but my understanding is the one item that was important was comment um, 10A. It's about the basement and the height of the basement. Why don't one of you, one, one of you gentlemen, um, fill us in on where we are in this application? Yeah, sure. Um, Steve, as you mentioned, uh, the commission opened this hearing on uh, March 26th and continued the hearing to allow the applicant to provide and respond to additional comments uh, that were raised by Joe Canis. Since that time, uh, the applicant has submitted revised materials relative to uh, Mr. Canis's comments. And uh, Steve, as you noted, uh, Joe issued a memo dated April 2nd, noting that all of his comments have been addressed to his satisfaction, endorsing the project. Um, and also, as you know, um, relative to comment 10A, um, Mr. Canis recommended consider raising the house or reducing the basement height uh, to, to reduce the frequency of stormwater discharge from the basement area. Of course, during the public hearing, it was noted um, <clears throat> the very high groundwater levels on the property and that by, um, by raising that the basement height would significantly reduce the uh, water that would need to be discharged from, uh, from the basement in that area. Um, <clears throat> the applicant's representatives, Nick DeMeo of DeMeo Design Group and um, Robert of Soundview Engineering, the applicant's engineer, uh, are here tonight to explain the modifications that were made to the plans. Uh, the responses that were made to Mr. Canis's comments and uh, to answer any remaining comments that you may have this evening. Okay, fantastic. I know you're not Nick Tomato, yeah. so you must be from <coughs> Robert. It's Mars Lack. Can you say a little louder for the record, please? Sam, uh, Robert Mars Lack, Sam, you engineers. Where's your uh, microphone? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So at the bottom line, are we raising the house or reducing the crawl space, or that's what we're going to find out right now? Uh, we're going to find that out right now, um, but I don't believe the applicant has has raised the elevation of of the basement. Bob will. No, course, we did. We did not. We'll of course confirm that. We, we did not change the elevation of the basement. No. Okay. Um, we didn't think think it was necessary. Okay. Since it's very close to what the crawl space is now in the existing house, so we didn't think it was, and the pumps really do not run too often. So, right, so that kind of see, we had it exactly at that number originally, but we um, we had to adjust it based on the, um, the average height of the building. 
to conform to that. So we ended up lowering the first floor and lowering the basement. Okay. So why don't you if you wanted to explain to us what you did, what the changes are, you want to put that up on the easel and, and put it uh, up to get and tilt the easel. There's a screw on this side facing us there. Okay. <coughs> well, we're addressing the, uh, well, in the comments it said to um, go back to fresh metal condition, right? Yep, that was correct. Amount. So we, we did that. We increased the, the drainage systems 50 percent um, to accommodate that. And, and what, what I want you to just tell us what you changed from two weeks ago to today. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, well, that's one thing. We we increased the uh, the radius on the tree. There was a comment on there to increase it to be two times the. Okay. Plus three feet. No, I'm sorry. Ten times the breast diameter, plus three feet, and we 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 doubled the tree well radius on these two trees. Okay. Um, what else? We adjusted. Oh, we, we actually moved the house over about three or four feet to get away from these trees as well, and we adjusted this. Um, this wall over here to tighten it up a little bit. Um, we thought that would accommodate the, uh, the setback to that wetland a little more. Um, other than that... Um, so you say you increased the um, drainage system by 50%. Effectively the same design and you just added a it's, Well, it, in, yeah. That's what it came out to be, 50% mm -hmm. bigger, probably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but in all cases, there's three systems. Mm -hmm. I believe all three of them, all three of them are bigger by 50%. Yeah. Approximately 50%. So now, wait a second. I, it, I'm staring at the old plans that are dated March 11th, right? What are the date of your plans? Maybe March 27th. Okay. And so the meeting was on the 26th, right? Okay. So that, how many, and the one that's on the upper left, it's about 11 o'clock. How many chambers did you add to that one? This one? No. This it's one a septic. Is, no, no. Over there, no. Right there, yep. That there might, might be close to the same, is it? It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, 12 units? Mm -hmm. Yep. Four by three, so that didn't change. That one didn't change. These, mm -hmm. these two did. And uh, the, yeah, one that's, that. the one that's at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, how many did that one too? Well, well that, that tripled in size. That was that was That's one by 20 three. Units. It's twenty units. It's yeah. It was one by three. Uh, no. Yeah. Now it's it's five by four. Uh, nope. That was one by three. One by three. I don't see anything going up. It would be easier if I pulled it up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You could. Yeah. Want to take a stand at this? We have this nine shady acres. You uploaded these revised plans, Bob. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the one that's at, at 11 o'clock is the same, the one at 12 o'clock is the same, the one at 2 o'clock is the same, and the one that's at 4 o'clock is the same. We're uploading late March. I think the major changes were done just prior to the last meeting. So we don't that on. This that's the review by Joe. So this one. This one. Get the zip file. Yeah. Get open it. Which one would you like? Middle. So these are dated uh, March 27th, <laughs> and we can uh, zoom in a little more. 
I'm going to take it from here. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm just staring at March and March 11th, and they're exactly the same. Okay. It was changed at that point then. Um, so this, what I'm trying to do is to find out the difference between last meeting on March 26th and today. Um, as you said, the chambers increased by 50 percent. Well, yeah, that was in the revision just prior to that meeting. Yeah. So it was, so it it was changed at that time. Yeah. So it hasn't changed. That's that hasn't not, changed. No. That's not a change from the 26th. From today, no. no. Um, the tree wells, I mean, we addressed all of the comments by the peer review. Three wells here and here. The house is three feet that way. There's, this wall is closer to the house. Um, the walls hurt the house smooth. Um, the septic is now approved as well by the health department, right? When do you know when they approved that? Was last week. Last week? Yeah, they sent that. Yeah. They submitted a letter to yeah. us. And you uploaded their letter? Oh, I did not. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see that. Nick, I didn't know. did Nick upload it? He might have. He, might have. Nick's, uh, he, he received it. it. Yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yeah, it's definitely approved. Yeah. We, this could always be subject to approval. Right? It seems weird. It, it does seem weird. I mean, Nick's pretty efficient. Okay. All right, so the only thing I've seen that's changed from the 26th of today is the tree wells. And I it, it, I can't tell if you moved the house three feet, but I trust you. Yeah, it, it definitely moved three feet. Um, other than that, it's, well, it's the response to the calculations, how they were done, too. Um, that's reviewed by Joe Brown. Yeah. Okay, then the big issue was on item um, 10 that the, the, our, the, our, the peer review's recommendation was to either lift the house or shrink the crawl space, and you didn't either? Is that right? Uh, well, the, the crawl space in this is a basement in, the, in the, this house. He's referring to crawl space in the old house. But uh, his, his uh, comment was decrease the basement height. Yeah. Yeah. Consider raising the house or reducing I the basement height. The, the basement height is as, as low as it can be. Um, I believe it's eight feet. Do you get this? I, I, I'm kind of sort of lost. Am I missing something here? Because I think this. Is I, I I don't understand your response. The question was: Consider raising the house or reducing the basement height. To reduce the frequency of discharge, the applicant has responded that the proposed basement elevation is slightly deeper than the existing crawl space slab elevation. We do not dispute the statement. The town in recent years has established practice of reducing the continuous pumping of groundwater to wetlands and water sources. Since this is a new structure, the current application is an opportunity to reduce and/or eliminate another part of point of groundwater pumping. Um, the applicant should be prepared to discuss alternatives to the currently proposed basement design. Um, you're basically saying the existing crawl space is dry. Um, is, that, is that your response to all of that? Yeah, I mean, we could we could raise the basement, but we would have to apply for a variance for the, the height because it doesn't work. We, we had it at the exact elevation of what what it is now, and we had to adjust it. Last how, minute. how how deep is the basement in your proposed plans? It's an eight foot ceiling. So you could opt to not do the basement and do a crawl and elevate and bring up the basement the level of the lowest level up higher out of the further away from the groundwater. Well, that's not the wish of the owner though to have no basement. Yeah. Um, you want to get, you want to get approved, don't you? <laughs> but you can't make a statement to say that it's not possible. Right. That, that there is another option. Yeah, that would be one option. So, so that's that's the crux right now. Where does the sump pump out to? It goes from external um, pump chamber that goes to units and fill that are in the front yard. I 
that's it's the it's the their recommendation on April second, which is after the meeting, which is a week ago. It says our recommendation would be for a design to be modified to decrease the basement height or raise the house since the difference between the existing crawl space and the proposed basement floor is only one foot. Failing these options, failing those options, the system appears to be sized appropriately for a sump pump system. Joe is basically saying, I hear what you're saying, but I still think my recommendation is to, you know, decrease, to raise that bottom level of that basement, get it further away. That's right. his recommendation. It's Correct. not that it doesn't comply with the regulations. Right. This is what he's talking about are best practices. Right. So I, we, did, we did another house off of Mansfield, which I think was um, like stone. It's like, um, it's like stone wall road from corner stone wall. Yep. That's the one where the basement was designed to flood. And who wants to have a basement designed to flood is beyond me. Or if the sump pump will be running nonstop until the end of time. Correct. And then we had to make sure that there was a generator attached to the sump pump to attach to the house. Does this one have a generator attached to the house and the sump pump? It will be, yeah. Is it on the plant? Um is there a pad on the plant? Okay. Don't believe it's shown, no. The intent was to, to have it, though. No. No. Right, I mean, our goal tonight is to close the hearing. <coughs> There's stuff that, that's still outstanding. We well, close the, the, the only fix I know to that, that all parties involved. Um, we could raise the basement, but the, the architectural plans would have to be adjusted. Now, how does that work? I mean, the commission's not going to approve a specific house, okay. but they're approving, so and reviewing would tonight is a grading system. permit. Yep. And Joe Pagliarulo and Nick DeMeo can design any house they want in that footprint as long as it meets the regs. Okay. It could be a one story house, could be a two story house, could be a two and a half story house. Could be stucco, could be brick, could have lots of windows, could have the door in the back. We don't care. The commission's just looking at the grading. Yeah. Well, we're also looking at the, the height of the house. That it right. Uses, right? If, if it's a complying, right, you can't approve something that doesn't comply, of course. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to approve a 35 foot tall house. But one other question we have for you, Bob, is uh, the plan. This plan doesn't really show it, but the sheet two, can you go down to sheet two? Sheet two, I'm going to show you how to do that. Yeah. Maybe I can show the commission. Sure, you can touch that screen while you zoom it. So this wetland here, so you push the house a little further this way. Mm -hmm. and. This wetland, this is the 50 foot regulated area in blue. Mm -hmm. So as part of this proposal, you can see you're building a new wall here, about 52 feet from the wetlands, and you're removing this asphalt, which is now in the regulated area. Yeah. The wetlands are here, this is the regulated area. Any work in the regulated area requires EPC approval. So what, when Joe Paglarillo came here, he designed this to keep all the activity more than 50 feet away from that, from the wetlands, which would be everything in terms of this south side of the blue line. So uh, if you could run through in terms of that driveway, to construct that driveway and remove that piece of asphalt, which is now in the regulated area, and I don't know if it shows on the erosion control plan on that side of the house. Do you have an erosion control plan for that? Uh, I'll call it the north side of the house or the north side of the property. Yeah, we, we that's not shown as being addressed on that. That's the SEC drawing. Yeah, yeah, is that which sheet? Do you remember what sheet that is? SEC. It's yeah, right there. There. So we're we're we're, in, we're outside the fifty, so we're not we're not actually okay. showing that. So you're showing the silt fence coincident right here with that 50 foot regulated line. Yeah. Here, mm -hmm. um, right. so what you're gonna do is so dig up the asphalt first here. We'd have to remove the asphalt, yeah. 
So remove the asphalt in this area, yep. put the silt fence back up at the 51 foot line, and at the end of the project, or you can even do it during the, what are, you, what are your plans for this area? Just putting grass back in? Yes. Okay, so what else we have changed on this thing? I don't think there was anything else. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. So the only thing I got that changed was that something moved three feet and that we changed the um, <coughs> tree walls. That's it. We're not we're not lifting the house, we're not we're not shrinking the basement. That seems to be the Well Joe, yeah, generally speaking, yeah. We addressed all of his comments and he said that we did. And the stormwater calculations were, Those are addressed were, too. were yeah. modified to yeah. to be the way you wanted it, yeah. Right. To address the to address the, yeah. the, the fresh meadow. Okay, so let's go. It, so there there is a properly sized sump pump in there? That's what Joe indicates, yes. Right, so do we, do we know how big this thing is, the sump pump? Can you give us details about the sump pump you propose? We're just showing that, in these plants, we're showing an external concrete pump chamber yep. with dual pumps that pump to this system in the front, in the fill. And how big is the sump pump? Uh, it would be dual half horsepower pumps, effluent pumps with alarms. So can we put that in the resolution, the size of the pumps? I guess if you want to approve it with conditions, you can say it's got to be subject to the sump pump, right? Right, or what's going to happen is the water will, will fill their basement. Right, and then we got to flood a basin. The fire department's going to go out there and rescue them. Okay. Uh, any comments from uh, Jamie? Uh, uh, I would like to see the generator on the plans. It's pretty standard, especially with a system that's going to be this sensitive towards some running. You have like an AC unit, you've got electrical, but I've looked around. I haven't really found it. Did you know? Yeah, we, we can have that. About where you put it? Well, you can't because it's supposed to airing it. It sounds like we. It sounds like we might. I mean, it sounds like we might keep the hearing open. I still have to hear. Anything, all the questions don't seem like they're answered. Yeah. And Nick Demand is not here. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I I would be voting to keep this hearing open. I would of course want to hear from the public, but I'm. I don't see the technical answers to the main question of concern about the basement. I. I well, if we raise the basement one the one foot, is that satisfied? If, if, <coughs> that's the recommendation. That's the to recommendation. Raise, is to raise the house. I mean, this I can't tell any of the plans where it says the basement's going to set the eight foot clean. I mean, that's that. You, we can do that. I mean, we can raise the foot. We're just going to have to change the architecture. You're not going to approve any architectures. Yeah. Right, but it, I mean, you got to remember that if you raise, if you're raising the, the basement, you're raising the basement from eight feet to seven feet. That's not going to affect the height of the house, unless you, because you, the basement floor is coming up, but the side walls are not. Right, it, they'd have to make that decision. Do they want to take the whole thing and lift it up, All right, or just make it a seven foot ceiling? Against go for seven foot ceiling in the basement. I hope they have to ask their architect. You don't have to. It'll be seven six. You got five foot tall. I'm just going to vote Amy. George, any questions on this one? Um, I I thought I heard that uh, Joe was satisfied by the sump pump that has been described. So I'm not sure what all the uh, issue is. You've got the sump pump and you want it running all the time, so be it. Um, I'm satisfied with that. Yeah, I agree. With it. It's, his last sentence is 
Failing those options, the system appears to be sized for appropriately sized for appropriately by for proposed sump pump system. But what I was trying to find out is how big is the sump pump? Because then if you're going to make the resolution subject to, I don't know how big the sump pump is, and sump pump is going to be backed up by a generator. We got to have a generator. Uh, uh, do we normally know the size of the sump pump? Uh, I can only imagine somebody building a 6,000 square foot house is going to have an appropriate size. Right. I, so that, that, I mean, I'm not okay. But uh, anyway, that's just my point. I go into new construction houses all the time, and they're not all <laughs> created equal. All right, so what do you want to do? You want to keep this thing open, or you want to close it subject to? You want to keep it open, right? Is there additional public comment? This is a public okay. hearing. Right, that's yeah. agreed. Would anybody like in the public like to speak to this application? I have a couple comments. Please come on up, sir. Appropriate. Sure. State your name and address for the record. Yep. Thank you. That's what we call these public hearings. Uh, Kevin Stimson. I'm uh, the owner of Five Shady Acres Road. I'm directly north of this property. I bought this property. Did you get that, Kevin? Not at all. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, my concern is to uh, talk a little bit more in detail about the wetlands. Uh, there's a huge, I'm sure it's come up, I apologize, I could not attend last or two weeks ago on the 26th, I guess it was. And uh, probably between uh, my neighbor, John Blair, who's here in my house, we, we um, contain about 100% of the vernal pond, what it's a uh, vernal spring, when it's high. So it's pretty much all on my property, all on the adjacent property, and very little on this property, actually, uh, comparatively. And uh, during the rainy season, like it has been now, snowy season, the pond is at its highest. And uh, when it reaches an elevation, we have heavy rains like we did last week or so. Uh, there's an overflow on my north side of my property where the water just cascades over onto my property, a waterfall down through the back of my yard, down in the driveway, and ultimately, ultimately makes, it way, makes its way down to uh, the street itself. Um, also, when it's high, as it is now, it's probably about three or four inches below my foundation wall. It's back from the house because of my grade, about 30 or 40 feet, but if that were to raise another about four to six inches, it could be fairly catastrophic with overflow with the my basement and over my foundation wall and things like that. So we've been very conscious of it. In July and August, it's dry. There's not a drop of water there. But this time of year, it's really at its max. It becomes a potential issue. I took a series of photographs, I guess, last week when it was high point. I'd be happy to share those separately with the committee. Um, but that's um, that's my concern. I'm an architect as well. Um, I've been before this board on other projects. And um, again, I'm not here to discuss the setbacks or the architecture. I, I know the owner. And uh, I just want to express my concern about the wetlands and increased water height and how we deal with that and how this plan addresses that. Great. Thank you, sir. Yep. Okay. Would anybody else like to speak to this application? All right, I think we're done with the public. So it really comes down to just to displacing water and making sure it goes with this. Okay. So Amy would like to hear keep the hearing open. Amy? I'd like to see those photos. Yeah, can, uh, sorry, so could you submit those photos? To yeah, you, I'll, to uh, Dr. Woody, or what, what's the best way to get them to who? Or you got to email to um, Darian PZC, PZC at, at um, Darian CT. Want JPEGs or in the PowerPoint format or something? Either way, whatever's okay, easier right, for you. Well, I'll work on that. Acceptable. So Certainly. We'll keep the file. We'll, if we can lack, we're not, we're not we're closing tonight, we'll keep it open for those documents. Okay. Um, I don't have any preference. I'm okay closing it as well. I mean, I do, according to Joe's comments, while it would be nice if, I think it would be nice if they raised it, um, it certainly satisfies it as is. Um, so, subject to the sump pump. Subject to the sump pump, subject to the generator. I'm okay closing it too. I don't think we're going to get much of a change between now and the next week. We might get a diagram that puts a generator on here, but we can just make it a condition of approval. Yeah. Right. Do you want to go back to your client and ask if they want to raise the, the, the basement or foot? <coughs> so it's raising the basement floor or foot. That's what you said that you you want to do, which which coincides well, with the peer reviews recommendation. 
Well, to your point, I mean, to get the approval, uh, but I think Nick is going to disagree with that. Um, well, he should have been here. <laughs> Not here. Um, Which is why I'm leaning towards leaving it open so you have the opportunity <coughs> to um, address these questions um, without us just closing the hearing and voting. Because you're in vote, you don't get you don't get four votes. You don't get approval. You get back to square one. Okay, leave it open then. It's okay, we do this. We get yeah, time. It's okay. yeah, we do have time because the hearing was open the twenty sixth. Our next meeting is April twenty third, two weeks. Um, so we can certainly we can get it to that agenda. It should be pretty straightforward. I mean, we have a very long agenda on the twenty third, so. It's questionable whether we're going to get to everything that night. But I think what you're saying, Bob, is uh, I think what you're hearing from the commission is generator and AC units need to be shown on a plant somewhere, right? Yeah. And we talked about what you're doing with that northern part near the wetland, the driveway removal. That just needs to be fine-tuned, yes? Yeah. And then the detail, I think what I'm hearing from the commission is the detail on the basement. Are right, you go with a seven foot basement, you're gonna lift the whole thing and tweak the, it probably would require a tweak of the third floor dormer, either bringing them down, adjusting the height of the attic would be my guess. Because looking at what they have yeah. is, it's a two story house will fit, right? Yeah. 10, 10, 10 foot ceilings, 10 foot ceiling. So what's putting you, and I've been seeing the architectural, is probably the height of the attic. Yeah. So you might be able to adjust or have Joe work on adjusting the roof line or the dormers in the attic. That might get you up a little bit and result in less sump pump or less generator. Uh, by tweaking the roof line now, you're sa they're saving themselves money you know, in the future. Okay. Is there a zoning text box on the plans? Because I didn't see it. Do you have the sure. survey? Did they upload the survey? Do you, have you Nick would have done that, yeah. We make sure that Nick has uploaded the survey and the text box. So we'll add that to the list. Okay. I just want to see the, the, the text box. The, the, the survey text is updated. Yeah. Yeah. Is uploaded to the okay, great. So those items okay. uh, continue to Tuesday, April 23rd, 7 p.m. in room 206 of Town Hall upstairs. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Because we didn't get hard copies of these. No, um, no, I have to give you. <coughs> okay, just mail them to the office. See, Jeremy, it says on the zoning text box. Yeah. Uh, on the plan, it says refer to architecturals. We don't have the. Thanks. Do we know? Yep, no change. No change. No change. And then maximum building height and stories. I don't do want to have stories height refer the to architecturals to. are, are oh, no, included as part of the file, yes. Okay. They are, I guess they have the height at twenty nine point eight three feet. Yeah, we brought that up at the last meeting that they were right right <coughs> right at the thirty. Right. Twenty nine point three. Yeah. Yeah. They're allowed to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, next item on the agenda, continuation of public hearing regarding landfilling and regrading application number 563 PL24-14, Matthew and Christy Walsh at 29 Highview Road. Proposal to recreate the rear, to rear, the rear yard to create more level lawn area and form late site development activities within a regulated area, including the removal of the tennis court, installation of stormwater management, Abandonment, abandonment of the existing septic system. The 1.73 plus or minus acre septic <laughs> property is located on the southwestern terminus of Highview Road, approximately 850 feet south of its intersection with Ridge Acres Road, and is shown on the assessor's map number four as lot 52A is an apple in the R1 residential zone here in open on March 26, 2024. Okay, uh, we got a whole another set of documents on this one and some letters from the neighbors too. What do we got? Yep, correct. So um, again, this this hearing was opened by the commission on March 26th. Since that date, uh, the applicant had 
submitted or has submitted additional materials for the record relative to uh, comments that were brought up by the commission and the public during that first public hearing night. Um, included in those changes are new Coltec units for uh, drainage as well as a, a fairly detailed replanting and landscaping plan um, for the property. Um, Wayne Devonzo is here this evening to present those changes to the Commission and to answer any additional questions the Commission may have. Fantastic. Welcome, Wayne. Hi. How are you? Great. For the record, Thanks. Wayne Devonzo, Fairfield County Engineer. Uh, this was before you uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we had reanalyzed the drainage to address the removal of a number of trees uh, in the rear yard. It was reanalyzed as if it were a wooded condition. And uh, the result is we are now providing a 14 chambers of uh, 14 Caltech chambers to reduce the runoff. Uh, we are collecting a fairly substantial portion of the roof and a, a section of the driveway as well, and routing it to, to the proposed Caltex, which uh, are approximately 1,000 cubic feet or 7,500 gallons of capacity. Uh, again, the grading is pretty much as last time we're not changing uh, you know, any of the runoff uh, directions uh, on the property. It's maintaining current current runoff uh, directions for the property. Uh, the tennis court, which is the red rectangle you see there, is, is going to be removed. And um, those are pretty much the changes that were made. There's a planting plan that Alexander Mock will uh, discuss with you uh, that's also being proposed to uh, to add some more trees and, and plantings. Okay. So. Uh, good evening, uh, Alexandra Mark, a uh, landscape designer. I did prepare a planting plan to replace the trees which were lost. So uh, the ones which are uh, light green are the existing trees. There were actually several of them, or more than uh, several spared, uh, including uh, the large one oak, uh, 36 inch and uh, 40 uh, inch tall. Uh, 36 uh, um, maple, uh, inch maple, and uh, 20 inch maple. And the, the other ones are a little bit smaller trees, which are still kind of in the back of the property and along the property lines. The ones in the darker colors are the ones which we are going to be proposing. Um, there is no understory growth uh, within the leftover uh, forest. So we are proposing large trees and we're also proposing small trees which are going to contribute to the understory growth. Um, on the <coughs> menu we have white spruce, we have a sweet bay magnolia, eastern uh, red bud, these are all flowering trees which are really popular for uh, pollinators and birds. And uh, we have white oak which is like the most uh, ecologically viable tree in the United States. And uh, we have flowering dogwood, this is a smaller tree with a lot of flowers and, and fruit, again pollinators and, uh, and birds. And we have fringe tree, which is also a, a smaller size uh, tree. So the, te uh, the tennis court that's going to be removed, and I apologize, what's that going to be now, grass? Yes. So this is going to be usable area, recreational area for the family. And actually the tennis court uh, takes quite of an area of the backyard. And um, so the trees which were removed were basically along the edges. Um, this was always um, not um, wooded. Great. Central motion. Um, was there any consultation with the neighbors at all on your design? Um, no, I haven't had any consultations. Okay, because I mean, I, the stuff that I read in the file was all about clear cutting and that's all the, the drainage problems. Because the, the, all these call texts we're talking about, these 14 new call texts, that's new this week from two weeks ago. They weren't here. That's correct. The original proposal did not include drainage. Okay. Uh, Wayne submitted this revised plan. Uh, unfortunately, we have not heard back from Joe Canis on this latest revision. Um, so, but I did speak to Wayne before the meeting. It's it's extra drainage that wasn't on the plan that Joe signed off on. Great. And was the pool always proposed? In the yes. Okay. Yes, it, it doesn't count for that. 
accounted for. The pool is not being closed. It is, it is accounted for. It, and, and it's accounted for, but it's not a part of this. It's not part of this, yeah, that's right. right. But, but it's what they're accounted for in the drainage, so they don't have to add in more coal tax but when they put it in. Uh, it's, it's always appreciated when you get, tell us about the pool in advance versus yeah. throwing it in yeah. three years ago. So to ask you a question about the neighbors, I did not consult with them because, uh, but I did listen to the uh, last hearing and I've heard different numbers. I've heard 30 trees, I've heard 50 trees I think in one of the emails. Um, I don't believe 50 trees will fit here. Um, I didn't see the site before, so I can't really uh, speak to it. But it, I did ask uh, the owner how many trees were removed, and he said approximately 20. And we're proposing 28. And uh, as much as uh, he didn't want any trees here, I pushed for it because I understand that the drainage patterns are going uh, this way. So we'd like to have, this is not really for the screening because this area is all wooded, but uh, mostly for um, for more absorption of the stormwater. Great. Okay. Um, Do we need to wait here from Joe? That, well, that's part of it, but yeah. I want to know if you have any questions now. Not about what's presented. I was going to ask about the number of trees removed, but it sounds like... The number of trees, to me, to me that's, it's, that's past tense. It was a long time ago. When, when did the trees get cleared? I think it was within the past couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years, not at least. But I don't know. The neighbors would know it. Okay. Um, any questions from you? No, Sorry. I don't have any. I don't think I'd be okay to close it. I don't think we need to wait uh, because the prior application, this is an improvement over that, and Joe signed off on the last one. We kept it open mostly for the planting of the trees as opposed to anything specific regarding the Okay. Um, Amy or George? Uh, given the concern by the neighbors, I would like to see Joe's comments to see if he believes that the reduction with these cold texts would be substantial. And I can appreciate that you know, they can't solve Mother Nature and, and topography and how water sheds. I can appreciate that. And, and in heavy rain events, I can understand that they're, they're not going to fix those events. Um, but I, I would like to hear his comments on, on what he believes. This, these additional cold texts will, will, will do. Okay. Um, George, any questions at this point? I'm just looking at the cold text to, uh, I don't see any, any pipes or you know, into it. Where, where does, how, how does it get water in? Yeah. It is, uh, the roof leaders are connected, um, I'm sorry, the roof leaders are connected here to a, to a junction box, which is right here. So this all ties into this junction box, which then feeds into, into the Caltex. And we've got two drains in, in the driveway connecting to a coarse particle separator, which also comes around. And comes I into see. The okay. Thank you. Thank you. Point to the ones that are in the driveway again. I think I saw them. I'm sorry. In the, point to the ones that are in the driveway again. Uh, it's right oh, okay, here, there. and there's a drain here. And what's the, what's the um, it looks like two manholes off the corner of the house. What's that? right above the pool. No, above the pool. Higher. Right there. Right, there. right here? Yeah, there's another two manholes. So those, the, those are just contour. Um, like a, maybe to the left of that. To the left of that, that, that is the, uh, the septic tank. We have a... That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's a septic tank. Would you like to... We have a fair amount of neighbors here that came out before. Uh, it, might, it might be helpful for their benefit if you can summarize what those what this system will do with regards to reducing a, your impervious surface installing this new system effectually what are the deltas between current conditions sure. and afterwards i think that would be sure. helpful for everybody to get your perspective on sure um, this system reduces the runoff for the two through 50 year storms um, it's uh, you know again we're also removing the tennis court which, which aids in that um, the tennis court was pervious anyway. It's an impervious surface. But it was. It was. Yeah, it, it's still there as of today. Right. But it, it is going to be removed. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, so those um, those storms reduce in value. Um, just to give an example, a 50 year reduces from 8.51 cubic feet per second to 8.15. Uh, so there's a, uh, yeah. 
it's a bit of a reduction. And again, it's a four, it's 14 units of Caltech 330s. They're the large chambers. It is a thousand cubic feet, which is about 7,500 gallons of of capacity. Uh, so it is in conjunction with removing the impervious surface. There's a net reduction in impervious surface even without adding any Caltex. Mm -hmm. So um, between those two things, and it was conservatively calculated for about 31,000 square feet of wooded area, which is probably overstating what was actually there. So the, you know, our targets, you know, these existing runoff values, you know, the 8.51 I quoted, you know, it's, it's probably uh, lower than what it, what it was in reality, because we're, we're assuming a, a larger wooded area than I think was actually there. Are we going to uh, record the, the, the um, stormwater maintenance plan on the plan records? If, if, right, where, where a drainage system is proposed by an applicant, uh, the commission has for many years now been uh, including a condition of approval that a notice of drainage maintenance plan be filed in the land records, that the applicant prepare one, and that the owner and future owners would then know uh, how these cultic units need to be maintained, so to speak. Because they gave us a draft of mixing the same thing twice. Right. Normally, that's something that would get reviewed, and uh, if okay, uh, we'd file a notice in the land records okay. regarding cool. the maintenance. Right. I'm going to open it up to the general public. Would anybody like to speak to this application? Please, welcome. Just state your name and address for the line director. Julie Forrest, Nice to meet you, Julie. We got your note, too. Thank you. And my photographs. We did get a lot of photographs, too. I may also end up speaking for my neighbor to the south because she had to run out and pick up a child at our ball game. That's fine. <coughs> I came back from my ball game. My kids' game ended at 530, so I'm here early. Oh. Well, she's still doing whatever she's doing. My whole concern is not whether there's a swimming pool up there or a tennis court or what, but as of June this past year, and this lasted for a good two months, if not almost three, at least 20 to 30 old growth trees, not just running along the edge of the property. The entire thing was just. I can't hear. The door has That's to okay. Well, we can open up that one. Yeah. We can open up that one. That one's open. Okay. It's okay. Um, these massive trees. I'm not talking about this or this. I'm talking about these kind of trees were just totally cut down. It took forever for them to chop them up and grind up, and when it, it went on for three months. And I know at the last presentation, they, when you're talking about the impervious and whether things will drain, they said the only thing that been there when they did the survey in September was just a few trees on the back. Well, that's true, because that's all that was left. Because the other ones had taken out in June of oh, last summer. Massive. It was. You know, the big kind of grabs the tree trunk, lifts the whole thing up, and chops about one of those. Um, <clears throat> the problem is, starting in the early fall, things started flowing. And the water is just pouring down the hill. I have a steady running down both sides of my yard that are, that are down. I had, my lawn guys had come out two weeks ago to spread the tick, spread, and their push, not the riding one, but push one, sank six inches into the soil, and they had to get changed to pull it out. It is still like that. That's how deep it is. Uh, the front yard is not quite so wet. It is wet. It's spongy to walk on. My concern is when they start draining from whatever the system is, it cannot just dump in my yard. I sent one picture today. We have a swimming pool. It has stone above it, and the water is right up to the edge of the stone from coming down the hill. I have definitely lost a beautiful red bud tree that's been in six inches of water for probably two months. I have several others that are questionable whether they're going to survive or not. Um, my neighbor to the south, their kids haven't been able to play in the yard for months. It's just, I mean, when you see water coming in rivers and with enough force that it's also bringing slush 
and leaves through. Um, is that the same picture you have that's coming underneath your fence? That's part of it. Yeah, on one side it's coming under a, a stockade fence. Yep. The other side it is all, um, <coughs> excuse me, chain link that goes up the hill. I was out walking today to just make sure it was, I want to see that it's drying up at all. The deer hoofs are going in this deep. So you know that this is just absolutely saturated. So my fear is, and, uh, and my neighbors, and my other neighbor is here to speak, we have to make sure that we're, if, wherever this is being discharged, it's not just not going to send it down. Now, I had spoken to the contractors who were up there cutting the trees down at the time, and I said I was worried about, first I was worried about just dirt flowing down the hill, and they put up the plastic rip wrap but I was worried about water coming down the hill. And they said, well, they were going to be putting in a swimming pool is what they thought they were doing. And I assumed they meant they were doing it. And had that been done then, and the water had been dealt with, I didn't know it was going to go through the entire winter. The other piece, which is not affecting somebody 100 feet from the property, but if you're familiar with Maywood Road, go to the top of my hill, go through their yard, down the other side. There's still a sign, two signs, that say, careful of ice. The water poured down, not just only our side, but the other side. And at one point, for a couple of months, there was only one line of, tra one line of traffic that was open because the ice was about this deep on Maple Road. Uh, that I don't think has been addressed because I think Nobody really, there's always been water coming off the hills, and I think nobody paid much attention to that. But it's just so totally connected with us drowning, and that side I've never, I've lived in at my house for since 98. I have never seen ice on Maywood Road. I walk there every single day. Uh, we have a good drainage system in our yard, which we had to put in when 27 was built on high height because they put in a building they had not planned for any drainage. And so there's kind of haphazard drainage that is in there. Um, but this is just a whole new level. It's just really, it's just pouring down the hill. And then I can't go out in the yard on that on one side at all the two edges of my yard right behind my house in the front yard i can walk part way in but after i get to a certain point it's not possible okay. but uh, so what i want is an absolute guarantee that a training system that goes in there takes <coughs> into account where when it comes out of these holding tanks whatever they are that they don't then just come down our hill so um, my next door neighbor, uh, maybe she'll get back before, but she's really being hit because her kids can't use the yard. And what's her address? Well, if I'm 50, she's, I think she's 48 or 46. It's a double, she's kind of a double, the Galt's. That's the Galt's. Yeah, house. we got to love her too. Yeah, she was here earlier. She just had to run out. She may get back. But okay. anyway, whatever you can she's do, 46. I want them to enjoy the property. Right. We enjoy it, but not at not at the expense of us not being able to use ours. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, I'll go back to you for a second. Would anybody else like to speak to this application? Yes, please. Welcome, please. Hello. Just give us your name and address. Miriam Hirschhalla. Okay. Fifty two Birch Road. So I live right next door to Julie. Okay, you didn't set, just for our, you didn't send us anything in the mail, right? No. Okay, great. We okay. Perfect. Um, we Go moved ahead. here exactly a year ago, and there was a small amount of water that would fall into the back of our property, but nothing that you know was terribly upsetting. Two weeks ago, what we did is we had a large hole dug behind our shed, which again is very right next door to Julie's property. Uh, a landscape architect had designed it, boulders in the bottom, more stones and more stones. We also ran some piping that must have run at least 
40 feet, it would then also drain into this hole that we dug. Well, we're still getting quite a bit of water, and as Julie was saying, it's a stream. It's a stream that runs, and it wasn't that way last year, and I certainly understand we've had a tremendous amount of water, um, but that doesn't mean we won't have a tremendous amount of water, you know, going forward. So, I, yeah, I guess I feel the way that, uh, that Julie does. It's, we, we try to take care of the issue ourselves at the expense of time and money, but it's not doing the job. We don't know what else we can do. We don't know what other options we have at this point. So it sounds like you put in a French drain. Is that what they call that? Well, the French drain runs for about 40 feet along the stone wall. Okay. And then it all goes into a very large pit. Probably the pit was about five, five and a half feet deep. Uh -huh. um, not quite the size of this opening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it didn't help that much. And, and again, we think the water is coming from up, up, uh, obviously upstream, uphill. I can't be a hundred percent sure because certainly the people. But that's all we got him for. Because the people who live right behind yeah. us, they of course, their property is higher than ours as well. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want to speak to this one? All right, Wayne, you're up, man. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Three nice women that think that their house that think that their house is getting flooded by your property. Your job is to make them feel good and yeah. swear to them that you're not gonna flood them out anymore. Yeah. Uh, uh, your I, system I is can't, getting, I can't speak to the weather, but yes, but uh, yeah. I'm not asking about no weather. Right. <laughs> I'm asking about yards that are all sure. Water, water yeah, yeah, there's there's no doubt I'm sure with the trees being removed that that the runoff is significantly more than it was you know previously, but this proposed system will you know will reduce the net runoff. Uh, it's not it will collect the water it, it you know it percolates it back into the groundwater so it doesn't just overflow and go you know into into the adjacent properties. Um, so, so there is. Uh, and again, it's a retention system. It's meant to retain the water, and it is a good. Yeah. And as a percentage, what is it retaining and slowing it down? Speak to what the, what that what does that realistically mean, in, it, it, in their terms, in layman's terms. Uh, yeah. Again, it, and this would be comparing it to the pre-existing condition, not not what's there today. But you know, again, it's reducing the runoff from, uh, you know, depending on which storm, from the two through fifty-year storms by. Five to seven or eight percent from what was there previously, not from what's happening today. So this, you know, should restore uh, the conditions back to what it was to what it was previously. Okay. So previously we're talking prior to June 2020. Yeah, before the trees were cut down. Okay. Whenever that was. And then the other the other item is. Um, I mean, I'm sure you did it, but make sure you. I want to make sure we get on the record. You did. Test test borings and soil tests. It, it, the all the it's yes. good. You have good prep tests out there. Yes, we did. We did uh, actually. I think it was um, six or uh, five or six holes that we did there. We did one, you know, in the vicinity of the proposed uh, retention. We which ensures that it is above any restrictive layer, uh, and we did a perk test there. Um, I don't recall what it was. A fairly good perk. I can't remember. Um, yeah, they were they were one in twenty hertz, so uh, you know a reasonably good good percolation rate. Okay. And that was uh, you know that was uh, hit with a factor of safety of you know one point five. So we designed it for you know worse than what we actually saw. Um, what about if we put berms along the the southern border of the property? Because you can see there. pictures of the of the fence that they submitted. So the water's coming underneath the fence, and right. so that to me that's a little bit of sheet runoff. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're the engineer. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a possibility. I, I would say though, you know, we're you know compared to what's there particularly today, we're going to be seeing a reduction in runoff. We're also getting rid of this large tennis car, which is right. But I'm, I'm not buying that because that was already. <laughs> It's already pervious surface anyway. Yeah. It's a tennis court and that retains water. It's not it's not an asphalt tennis court. Is it in the clay? It's a hard tennis court, yeah. It's it's it's, 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 it's asphalt? 
it's not asphalt, but I, I, mean, I evaluated it as asphalt, but it's, it's, it's not, not really curvy. Yeah, it's not curvy. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's not from this yeah. table. It's, it runs it's, off. Yeah. And it's, it's called like cement. Area. It's in cement. Cement. Yeah, when, yeah, when we convert that to water, it's going to okay. have a, you know, a good effect by it. it it's almost 6,000 square feet. And it's going to have a pretty good effect of producing the runoff by right, itself. Right, but again, that's, that's further north, and the problem is, is south. Yeah, but everything, the, 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 the contours do run this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. There. Really the one five, five, I, I don't you have the, the map, but actually I, I looked at the neighborhood and I wanted to understand uh, how the drainage works and, and what, how the runoff actually drains. So the highest elevation is here. And everything starts from here when we have a rain event. Everything sheet flows here to this property and then goes, I, I assume that you will uh, down there, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, also, when I was at the side, I was looking down the hill, and I see that you had some wetlands. Is that correct? No. No it's wetlands just wet, but on the property. Have, wet have you ever had wetlands delineated? Yeah, what? Have you ever had well, you, can trust, you can trust. You can trust us. It's but what's on their property is immaterial. What's on your property? Uh, so obviously, but with the berm, if you're going to block the flow of the sheet flow, which is naturally occurring, uh, you're going to be then diverting the flow here. Uh, and I don't know what's in here, but I'm sure that there's a neighbor who's going to now receiving the flow which he or she didn't receive before. So we have to make sure that, because this is going to be keep flowing, because that's the natural flow. Now we have to make sure that, yes, we had more trees before, we don't have them, but we'd like to plant them. And as soon as we plant them, they will start working and absorbing water. We are going to be removing this. Look how big this is. This is almost like, I would say, one-fourth of the yard. So this is impervious surface, which now is going to be absorbing <coughs> water and infiltrating water. This is going to help. And then we have this oversized, overkill infiltration system, um, which is going to be really helping. And this is supposed it, to be... In my engineer. mind, a 5% reduction doesn't seem to be oversized. That, that's actually a fairly large reduction. It, These numbers always tend to be small when you're shooting for, for matching them. It's, um, it, it's rare that you get to like 10% even. It's 5% is a fairly decent reduction, actually. And also, I, I, I suspect, I don't know, I may be wrong, correct me, please, uh, but March 24th, we had almost 3 inch of rain. And I think this devastation and the flow you are describing most likely happened at that day. And everybody noticed it, and everybody was affected by it. Um, and yes, the climate is changing, and we are going to have more of this precipitation. Well, that's why we're here. So but we we're, offering, we're offering more than we need infiltration. We're offering removing of the large impervious surface and restoring uh, the tree population. And I'd also point out, you know, this is a pretty large area of the roof, and actually the driveway also that, that's being routed to this. So that's a lot of runoff from, a, from fairly large impervious surfaces that are happening right now. That are, are you know, that runoff is going to be removed yeah. from well, affecting, well, affecting well, the neighbors. Yeah, I mean, I just don't get it. It's, a, it's, a, it's an, acre and, an acre and three quarters, and, and I don't understand why so much water is running off of this thing and not being absorbed on the old, on the old site. Well, we're not producing this water. The water is coming from the above and then sheet flows because that's, that's the slope and, and we can't stop it. We can help, and that's what we offer it when we're in the tennis court. Okay. Can I inquire, just uh, going back a little bit, Wayne, uh, did you say that you compared uh, the flow with the new trees to the the situation before they were all cut? I compared it to the situation before they were all cut. I didn't take any credit for the new trees. Yeah. I'm counting it all as long. Oh, so, so yeah, I'm not taking that. But, well, I'm curious, it, how would you know about the trees before? You, you did uh, I, analyze with trees? Yes, that's right. Yeah, with, 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 with condition. Again, just because of the neighbor's concern from the last meeting, yeah. I just conservatively said, okay, this was all woods, just looked at an aerial. You know, and just saying, oh, I see. Yeah, I'm not going to fight it. <laughs> it was voice. Let, let's find out what that runoff number okay. was. It's going to be a low number, which it was. Okay. But that's what we then. And now you're comparing it to no trees. We're comparing it to no trees, right? Mm -hmm. Comparing it to the, as if this was all just lawn oh. grass. Why not compare it 
with trees, with the new trees. It would be less conservative. It would um, be a bit lesser. Yeah, well, it's a fresh uh, they're even less, right? Yeah. Yeah. It'd look even better. So basically, they're they're yeah. presenting a worst case scenario. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So we have three. Okay. Removing this, making this permeable, more infiltration, giving much larger infiltration system, and then we're going to be planting trees around. So yeah, there are three go. elements of mitigation. <coughs> Okay. Just pull up your landscape plan again, if you don't mind. And, and did we already go through the cover fills last time? Because this is an agreement. Yeah, I can't remember what Wayne said in terms of how many truckloads coming in. Did you say 10? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. It was uh, 690 yards, I think. Cubic yards? Think so, so where's the cut and where's the fill? It's uh, actually... Because the whole application is making a level yard, so my kids. It's a relatively level yard. Yeah, yeah. it's soccer. Yeah. 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 Well, presumably where the tennis no, court is now is flat. Yeah, correct. Yes. It has to be. Yes. It's, it's, so it's, tell me where the fell's going in. I, I, you, you still lost me. Primarily here, in this area, for the most part. This is... So you're raising the elevation. So this is... This area has a cool level. So this is going to even extend it out. Mm -hmm. This contour line becomes, you know, moves to here. Um, here. It's 890 cubic yards. Okay. So you're, you're cutting off the top, right? There isn't much cut, really. It's a little, a little on, on the, the upper end, maybe. But, uh, so then, then the area that we're worried about is south of the cultex. I, mean, I keep saying south. It's, it's actually, really, it's actually west of the cultex. Yeah. It's really west of the cultex. Right. Yeah. Which is where the neighbors are, because right. the most effective the neighbor west. is. Here and here, here and here. Yeah, but it's micro and semantic golf. That's that's the that's the neighborhood. That's where you're filling in. So you're going to raise the grade there, and then if you put up the picture of the trees of the landscaping plan, do you understand this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now, now we're going to have a lot of barrier from the slope which is going to be created by the fill. So we have so, filtration. Right. So you're not way. getting you're not getting that much sheet flow from the top of the page, where above the tennis court, because that's already level. The tennis court's already level, and then where it, where it dropped off like five feet, they're going to raise it up where they where they boxes of the test which right where she is. And then they're gonna raise it up and at the bottom of that slope, you're gonna have all these new trees put in. Which I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. eight trees along that wall. Oh. Right? And I'm sure there's gonna be soft soils underneath the trees and, and mulch and all that good stuff. Yes. So that's also to capture the water. Yes. Okay, we're all on the same page? Got it? Got it? Okay. Any other questions that you ladies may have? Actually, I've just come out if you don't mind. Just come out up again. I'm sorry. We just want to get you on TV so we can see. There you go. It would be great if you would come to the house, and I would walk you through, and you would actually see what this flow is. Just come with your boots. I'll be happy. If you would do that, that would be fantastic. I'm a soil scientist, actually. I was like, after here today. I hope you don't go so. that far. Yeah. But it's, um, it, the, it started when the weather was still dry, the real runoff. It didn't start when it started raining. So here was what happened this time of the year, because we don't have leaves, and the foliage doesn't absorb as much as it usually absorbs. If we're getting all those early rains, this is a lot of runoff because there's basically nothing absorbing it. And then once the leaves will start growing, the trees become the umbrellas and they will absorb what's coming down. Right, but and this runoff started while the trees were all falling still on our properties. It's just that as they came down, it was just huge. I mean, I had 
I first knew this was happening when I suddenly had hundreds of birds screaming and flying toward the house for my bird feeders. And then I saw the little animals coming and realized because this was still, they still had nests and they were, and all that was being cut down during that. So this is, that was dry season and it, from then on it has been anything but dry. So addressing the animals actually, uh, this is supposed to be the green giant trees and I, I really convinced the owner to be 100% native. So these are native, native uh, trees which are going to be restoring the habitat for the... And good water drinkers. Hopefully, you know, your animals will now be migrating uphill. But I did learn on my eastern redbud, which was gorgeous, it can't stand in water. It's now it's killed it, and that's oh. what Brown Tree Company has to where, do. Where is your tree? Or can you, can you? Well, she's, I think. This, that tree, all right, is down my property. Here, comes. Butcher, no, are. that's the neighbor that's, that's not here, that's Mrs. Is this me here? <laughs> well, I have a fence that goes up, up between the neighbor to the north and mine, and it's, and I have, would my garage show on here anywhere? Kind of yeah. No, 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 it's no, 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 way down, all right, it's just that's to like the left, but the water that's coming in under the fence continues all the way down and then flows onto my driveway out on the street. Hmm. Um, and that's where it's sitting. And you can't get away from it. It's just, it's just there. <coughs> so, okay. I hope they're thirsty trees you're raising. If you don't mind, I mean, there's a lot of the way we get around this stuff. We, I've, I've been doing this for years. If you can go out there and you want to say, sure, explain what you're doing, that would be great. And I think the other person you're going to get a hold of is Mrs. Gold, because I bet you nickel that Mrs. Gold's kids and your client's kids are going to be playing together on the same across team and soccer team. So they both want level flat yards that are dry. So if you get it done now, mm. then they'll be winning championships 10 years from now. There we go. All right. That's the goal. Okay. Any other questions on this one? We good? We're good? Okay. You good? This was never subject to EPC. This is not wetlands. There's no wetlands on this property. You're within 50 feet of the work they're doing. Yeah. Okay. And then we're, we're going to still, we're going to keep the file open so Joe Cannes can put in his, his letter in. Right, there's two choices for the commission. One is, Joe, under state statute, you're allowed to accept staff reports after the hearing closes. Joe is, in this case, kind of a consulting engineer, his staff. So you can either close the hearing, accept his report, or leave the hearing open and take in his report. Your choice. Uh, what I would rather do is close the hearing. If the report says something really bad, then that makes it into the resolution, and then we can vote on the resolution, and then open it up again. If the report says everything good, then we save what we. Certainly a risk for the applicant, <coughs> but uh, the fact that uh, they could always withdraw we submit. The applicant could withdraw, but again, without drainage, Joe said, "Look, you're removing the impervious surface." That in itself should make it better while they're bringing in some fill, they're creating more level area. Correct, they're creating more level area right. so you can have what, enough sheet runoff. Right, what Joe's said, gonna check is the design that Wayne put together for the Coltex, and, and that is making sure that what he did put in all works, he's gonna read through the maintenance plan, and so that's up to the commission whether you want to close the hearing, accept the report after the hearing, or leave the hearing open. Yeah, the, the last thing I was thinking, what we did over at home school, or at home school, we put in those um, uh, drains at the edge of the property, along the edge of the property line. So that would be something you can connect to the complex to capture the front runs on the defense. But that yeah, was I don't the, think we could do that here. That's too low. Yeah, I don't think sure. that would work here because no, the coltec would be above the drain. Yeah. Okay. I, I, do you want to keep the hearing open or not? But I, I think if 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 um, Candace's report comes in really bad, I'd like to see Candace's report. Um, it's really uh, we're able to re keep you know take his report in our consideration, and that's that's something that's I would like to see. Okay. Uh, Joe signed off on it already. This is making it better than what he already signed off on. Okay. So there's nothing that I would have ever envisioned in Joe Candace's second report that will change anything about this. 
he's, he's, adding, he's, he's adding cold text, so he's making it better than what was already signed off on. So I should close. I would close it. I agree with closing it. Wait for that. Okay. Um, I would I would entertain a motion to close the hearing. Adam mm -hmm. makes a motion for a second. Okay. Amy makes a second. All in favor? Okay. The hearing is closed. Thank you. You're going to go meet with the neighbors. And I will report to you. Thank you. And then send us an email. Um, thank you. <laughs> Julie, just introduce yourself to, uh, and then make sure your other friend, uh, Mrs. Galt, is going to All right. All right. That's, that's the end of the public hearing. Now we're going to go to the general meeting. The first on the agenda is Administrative Business Site Plan Application Number 167Ds and Dog PL24-35, the Goose Restaurant, Hat Co. Darian LLC at 972 Boston Post Road. Proposed to establish a new 720 plus minus square foot outdoor dining area in the rear of the restaurant. The outdoor space is to occupy four parking spaces within the town owned Center Street South Municipal parking lot that will be leased by the restaurant from the town. The 0.14 plus minus acre subject property is located on the south side of the southeast side of Boston Post Road, approximately 120 feet yeah. southwards of its intersection of Center Street. The restaurant is shown on assessor's map number 72 is lot five and the parking lot is on map 72 lot 42 in the CV Central Business District zone. So in our materials, we've got a short goose patio narrative. Um, this was something that already went in front of the Board of Selectmen, all the terms of lease and all that. Was Not technically a lease, it's a license agreement. License agreement yes. So there's no lease, because if there was a lease, there'd have to be an 8-24 referral. So in this case, it's a license agreement, and the Board of Selectmen has approved that license agreement. So for, they've also approved Bodega right next to it. Right. So for a little bit of background, in the year of COVID, the summer of COVID, which was um, started in April of 20, um, 2020, we, we permitted the Goose and Bodega next door to put um, their restaurant outside dining out there. Now they want to make it permanent. Um, and they're going to license agreement spaces there. So this is something that existed uh, what, three or four years ago. Um, they worked out the terms of the agreement with the town. This diagram, I don't understand the diagram, but I, mean, I, I, I guess it's going to work for this. But you want to explain to us, or we have a representative of the, it's not an obvious gentleman, you want to explain to us first? Yeah, sure. Um, it, and just to note that the, the applicants did submit the license agreement and uploaded that to the file um, past couple of days as well. But, um, so this is really comes down to administrative business site plan review under Public Act 22-1 of the Connecticut um, uh, Connecticut statutes, um, which allows for outdoor dining as of right as of May 1st, 2023. Um, so the applicant, the goose, is submitted, as Steve, as you know, um, you know a, a detailed narrative as well as um, plans of what they intend to do with the outdoor space. Um, Lindsay is here this evening. Uh, she's the general manager of the goose to uh, present some of the details of specifically what they're looking to do and to answer any questions that you have. Lindsay, why don't you give us a, um, a uh, quick review of what we're doing here then? Yes. And then also the other question is, it's gonna be open by Mother's Day. Yeah, well, we're hoping so. <laughs> I know Bodega's trying to open for Cinco de Mayo, so we yeah. don't want to overshadow that, but hopefully for Mother's Day. <laughs> that's that's the day we require all outdoor dining to be open. State your name, I'm here for the record, Oh, please. Lindsay Krupa. Because we have two mothers on the board in the commission. So their kids will enjoy the games. Um, so basically what we're looking to do is elevate the patio experience that we were able to offer during COVID. Um, you know, we used the, the parking spaces behind the restaurant. We found that it was, it offered us something different. Um, you know, Bodega has kind of already a bigger patio than we do. So we're kind of falling behind them there. 
And what we want to do this year is we want to make it a little bit different, more of a fun, flexible space. So I used to run a beer garden in Stanford, and that's kind of like my favorite that thing to do. That was your lady? Yeah. That was you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I ran it for five years. That's a good I time. just joined the Goose uh, last February. So, um, I'm one of the owners. Smart that's Paul. <coughs> Um, so basically loving the beer garden environment and realizing that Darien really doesn't have anything that style, I thought maybe to be more competitive with Bodega Next Door, we might do something different, offering some outdoor games, um, Cornhole, Giant Jenga, Connect Four. We have a great um, atmosphere of families that come to the Goose, so I think this would be enjoyable for the children as well as the adults. Um, this is, I'm sorry, I'm no architect. Um, no, this I, is, I, now I got it. They were like, we need a layout. I, I did this, yeah. We need a layout, and I did my best. So, just we, come, where, where is the front door CVS? So, the front door CVS is here. Okay. Yeah, so this is the fire lane parking spot. So, this is all in the parking spots, right? Um, and then this is the rest. Oh. It's it's so you gotta hit the thing on the left. There you go. Um, I'm not trying to oversee the space. Like I said, I want it to be a flexible area. So we're only looking to do four tables of six, umbrellas, string lights. All of those would be solar. I'm not looking to run power out there. And it's such a sunny spot, so it makes sense just to do everything solar. Okay. Um, we also don't need to run power for the music. I'm going to work with Bodega next door to make it a cohesive listening experience. I don't want to blast one thing and then they're playing something else. Um, and then also just some Adirondack chairs for people to sit and hang out and watch while everyone plays the games. Um, what we did, and it's in the packet, these planters that they used in 2020 and 2021. 2021, yeah. Um, with the cement barriers in between. Yeah. Uh, with the cement barriers in between, obviously, to keep the space safe from any um, motor vehicles. Um, but what I did want to do this year, and you can't tell in this, is put kind of a privacy screen, raise it up a little bit on the back side to block the view of the parking lot. Because me personally, I wouldn't be super inclined to go sit in a parking lot and watch cars drive by and beep at each other and stuff. So, you know. So the, where's, where's, the door, where's the door that I always go through when I go to the Goose? So when you come to the Goose, yeah. So the, right this way goes to the courtyard. Our other patio is right over here, and then you go to the courtyard where the entrance is to the goose. This is also an entrance to the goose where the kitchen door is, um, uh, where we probably would be servicing the patio from. So you serve from the back side, okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, it's the path of least resistance. So. No, they got all ARB approval on this already? They go to the ARB April 23rd. 23rd, Two yes. weeks from tonight, but Kinsey is before you tonight for, the, as Fred said, the site plan, where they're putting everything, and then ARB will approve the details, umbrellas, chairs, screens, planters, and then once presumably they get your approval and ARB's approval, they sign the license agreement and start installing. Fantastic. Okay. I think we're good. We got it. Okay. Right? Everyone got it? Drew, you good? Drew, you good? Good. We got three thumbs up. All right. Does anyone want to say anything or you're the spokesperson? You're the man. Right? Um, no, you. thank you. That's all. We're just, we're, we're, we want to use the space in the same way as we did in 21 and 22. That's you all. Got it. Just nicer. More fun. Just nicer. And we expect you guys to visit the beer garden. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like, I'll be there Mother's Day. <laughs> all right. Um, any questions on this? We're good. Since it's a general meeting item, any from what the public can speak to what's here, but what I would do is take a straw poll motion to approve as submitted. George makes the motion. Amy makes a second. All in favor? You got your approval. Thank Good job. You. Thank you very much. You're welcome, welcome. sir. Say hi to Chris Reynolds for me. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, next item on the agenda. Uh, this is another one of these. This past tense. Right? Do you have anything else? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next on my agenda, administrative business um, site plan application number 124H is in Harry, PL 24-45, Antonio's Restaurants, Dulce City, Inc. at 975 Boston Post Road. Proposal to construct a new pergola to establish an outdoor dining area at the rear of the restaurant. The 0 0.28 plus subject property is located on the 
northwest side of Boston Post Road, approximately 140 feet southwest of its intersection with Squat Lane, and is shown on assessor's map number 73 is lot 30 in the central business district zone. In our materials, we got a copy of an architectural review approval letter, it looks like, from March 2024 on this one. Yep. Um, the, I was back there today. The pergola is already up. It looks like it's finished. It looks like it's what's in the pictures there. Fred, why don't you give us a heads up on what they're doing here and why are we seeing this after the fact and not before the fact? Yeah, so this is really a two-part application. The first being a business site plan application for uh, the after-the-fact construction of the pergola at the rear of the building, and then second, administrative business site plan review, again under Public Act 22, 22-1, under the Connecticut uh, uh, general, uh, general Statutes um, relative to outdoor dining uh, as of right, as of, as of May 1st, 2023. Um, the applicant did secure building permits for the changes to the building, but uh, never received planning and zoning commission review for the changes and improvements that, that took place um, about a month or two months ago. Okay. Um, I believe Antonio is here. Yes. Um, of Antonio's restaurant to um, provide any additional details relative to the improvements that were made and if you have any questions, um, Antonio should be able to answer those for you. Fantastic. Antonio, welcome. Okay. Please, if you don't mind. You're the news, you're the news game in town, man. Yes. Welcome. Antonio Sandolo, I'm the owner of Antonio's restaurant. Very good. Great food. Thank you. So how many tables, how many chairs, how many seats are we putting out there? So Because I mean, uh, all this land is owned by your landlord. Chair, so there's yeah. no public land at all. Um, the only thing that matters too, Fred, is that, remember, this is part of the application for a squad lane, which is not an application yet, but pre-hearing yet. That's yeah, that's... With that. um, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but... Yeah. So what, what are we putting here? So from my understanding, the seating part is already approved. Okay. Uh, so we, it was a misunderstanding. We put the pergola up. So hopefully we can fix it and do what, what's needed. Uh, the second thing is the, the blue sail on top is we took it down because we had the ARB meeting and they weren't too crazy about it. So I just, we decided to remove it and not do, um, any umbrella because the corner, this part here, as um, the sun comes up from the front of the building and kind of sets towards the bank, so okay. there's, there's plenty of shade just with the uh, with the lumber. Yeah. Okay. And this way we don't have to go through um, you know um, the umbrella part of it. So I submitted the stain and the uh, the tables and chairs, which uh, was uploaded. So how many tables do we have here uh, on your plan? I see one, two, three, it's 12, four, five. Twelve seats. And there's four, four is eight, eight nine, ten, yeah. eleven, twelve, four, three, sixteen. Four, I'm not sure. Twelve or sixteen. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I got fourteen. Fourteen. 14. 14. So that's what neither of us can count. Yeah, and <laughs> fourteen. All right. Um, um, and and what's what's our rule? If there's more than four seats outside, or eight seats, or something? Sixteen. Like 16. Right. If there's more than 16 seats, it requires the commission to evaluate parking relative to 14. the number of seats. Smart guy. So we're good. Yeah. Yeah. You got one thing right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that layout was given to me, so that's why I know I, uh, from the Dolcetti's. Okay. Well, he should also told you that he's yeah. going to commit for a permit. Yeah, that's a long story. <laughs> yeah. well, don't take care of him. Um, okay. Any okay, so questions on this one? So the, the tables are approved. You already went to ARB. Well, ARB just approved the pergola part, and then we're going to follow up with the details regarding chairs and stain color. Uh, and and you're going to present to that them on April 23rd? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. It says that presented to the ARB at April 23rd meeting, stained color, lighting design, chairs, tables, umbrellas. Yeah, I think they wanted to keep the process going, so they said okay with the pergola, and then we'll follow up with the, okay. the, the detail part of it. The only thing I would, tell, would recommend you is go over to look at the pergola that's behind 1020. They have two back there. Yeah. One behind 1020, one behind Granola Bar, whatever it is now. Um, those were both approved by the Yeah, that's what. That's how we got this. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah, this this look. And then it, you said they got a building permit to do all this stuff, so we got signed off, signed to blow away in the wind. Uh, not yet. They can't get signed off on the pergola until you guys approve it. Yeah. yeah but they got a building permit to put the pergola there. Mm. No. We, we, we applied for the permit. So I think building is waiting for tonight's approval. I see. And then he can start his process. They didn't even get a building permit put in there. It was a yeah, there's, same there's misunderstanding. A, yeah. It's a long story, he said. Yeah. No. That's what we so put in a minute. It's misunderstanding, yeah. long story. So there's no... Something about as of right. Something about this, right? All right. Did so, you yeah. know that God put those those piers in, in footings? Yeah, there's pins and... Uh, okay. I kept in touch with the... I mean, after the fact, I spoke to Mr. Beattie. Okay. So he's in the loop, and uh, I guess he's waiting for tonight to start his... He hasn't been out there yet? He, I, he, he, he's, he did a drive-by, but he's waiting for, I guess, I'm, I'm new That's to okay. this. So. I know you're, I heard you got great food, though. <laughs> we applied for the building permit, but he's waiting for tonight for him to do his part, I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't know if that makes sense, but. No, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. I got it. Any questions for this gentleman? Uh, just as I look at the picture here, is it changing the, um, uh, I guess, is there a resident on the top floor? No resident. It's, no resident? Um, Could there be a resident? Could no. it be yeah, an ADU? <laughs> no, it's, um, <laughs> it's office salon. space. Okay. Yeah, office space. Nail okay. salon and real estate. And do they use what I see as a porch and looks probably some... Is this impacting the egress from that space? Uh, no. There's actually a... I don't have a lid on. I think there's actually, staircases to Yeah, the there's a... Uh, trying to figure out where we are. Okay, so right here. This is my rear exit. Okay. So this is the front of the building here. This is the back, and this is left wide open intentionally because there's a set of stairs that go to the parking lot here. So this there's a, a nice flow here. Okay. So this first this first uh, post yeah. um, is you know at least four feet from the wall where, where it's already been you know really used every day. And where's okay. where's the restaurant at the bottom? So the, the restaurant's this part. So mainly this is not here. This is this is the interior of the restaurant. That's the interior. So this is my rear exit. I mean, this is showing the layout of the patio. Yeah, but yeah. if you see this door here, that's my back door. Okay. And, and where, this, the, where so do those stairs go? These stairs go up. That's these going up. That's through. how you get to the. Yeah. Office. Yeah. So basically, the tenants they come down these steps and they go uh, exit to the parking lot, which is back here. So this is no. There's no you know objects here. That's, okay. No impediment. Yeah. Okay. It's wide open. Yeah. Gotcha. So the tables would be here. so actually here you go. This is under the pergola. Yep. So the tables are only here. So this this gets put here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is what yeah. this is the walking area or the outdoor walkway. That's, that's pretty cool. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just have one question. Yes. Yeah. On the ARB application for the tables, you have two fours and three twos. But then later in what you submitted for uh, two fours the survey two rendering, you got two fours and two twos. So you're under for both, yeah. but you just might want to make sure it's it consistent. Yeah. So they're both the same seating? Well, you're under the 16, oh, which good. is what we care about that triggers the parking. Mm -hmm. But one you have 12 and one they, you have 14. They don't match. Okay. They don't match. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fire marshal, a letter from the fire marshal will come with the back permit then? Is that one? Yeah. Yeah. It's the whole thing, but. Yeah, okay. You're supposed to come to the other person. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I just wouldn't want to share it with you. Yeah. Fire marshal. You're good? Yeah. You're good. Marshal to Amy. 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 Okay. I don't think it's in the. I, I thought the fire marshal had submitted comments for the record and need to. Uh, Need to verify that. Okay. 
I don't believe are in the file. Okay, we'll check on that. Pick up things. Okay, so we have to. It's subject to the fire marshal, and because it's general meeting, somebody left to. Um, I'm going to take a motion to approve as submitted, subject to the fire marshal. <coughs> Um, and he makes a motion for a second. Adam makes a second. All in favor? You got your outdoor seating from us, sir. Thank you. Now you got to get hang out with the people from ARB and the fire marshal and the building department. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. See you later. You're welcome, sir. Good luck. Good luck. All right. Next item on the agenda: um, informal draft, formal discussion of draft zoning amendments regarding tax. Discussion of proposed amendments to the Darien zoning regulations relative to the regulation of placement of tanks on residential and commercial properties. <coughs> the derivation of this is um, a lot of people that have new houses and are renovating their houses are switching from oil to gas. And we did it in a lot of places, but um, most tanks that I've seen are below ground, and most of them are in the front yard below ground, so the trucks can get there. Every once in a while, you might see one that's above ground. Um, it's allowed to be somewhere visible from the street, but it's not supposed to be. But I would rather have it controlled and regulated, and I'd rather see them above ground. So I asked Jeremy to do some research, I'm sure with Fred and with Woody, and um, we came up with a draft document. So if you want to walk us through that, Jeremy, that would be fantastic. Sure, as Steve mentioned, uh, the proposal is really twofold. One is to clarify the existing regulations. When you go through the existing zoning regulations, there's not a lot in there about propane tanks. Uh, and so he said, you know what? We know we've been regulating them in terms of complying with setbacks and coverage and things, uh, but maybe it's time to better clarify the regulations, be very specific that, oh yes, if you have a propane tank, if it's within 50 feet of wetlands, it may need a wetlands permit. If it's in the flood zone, it needs to either be strapped down or on a platform, and it needs to meet the setbacks. So we said, you know what, let's create a new section 367, which is in the uh, section called Regulation of Other Improvements on the Lot, and make these clarifications with the provision that Steve talked about is no longer allowing propane tanks they, they, they have to meet the setbacks, but what we're also saying now is not only do you have to meet the setbacks, you can't be in front of the house. You can be to the side of the house or behind the house, but you can't be in front of the house. So that's one provision we put in here. Uh, certainly... I thought it was if it what was in the front, it would have to be buried. Yes, that's what we're saying is no above ground oh, tank. Oh, above. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. so if you look at the proposal on page two, Above ground tanks shall meet the zoning setbacks. All such tanks shall be placed to the side of or behind the principal residence or commercial structure of uh, the property. Underground uh, tanks shall comply solely with the setbacks in the building code. You don't need to meet the zoning setbacks because they're below ground. But the building code requires a 10 foot underground setback, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we are still tweaking the wording in Section 367 to make this as clear and concise as possible. So uh, over the next week, and how things go tonight, we're going to fine tune it. So if you have any ideas on how to fine tune it, we do believe that such a proposal would be consistent with the town plan in terms of clarifying regulations and updating zoning regulations to, re to implement policies. Um, so what we would do is put together a formal proposal put it on the agenda for late May, early June, have a public hearing, and take it from there. But wanted to get your early feedback. George, I'm sorry to say, but uh, the, just for public consumption, I assume this is to be the case, this would only be effective for future installations. That's of correct. Tanks. Um, to everybody else, technically grandfather. All right. Um, I'm just thinking of one particular case, is, and it raises the question of what is the side well, that's what we talked talk about, about is the front if you're on a corner, you have, according to the zoning regulations, you have two front yards. So the question would be, what is behind or to the side of a house, mm -hmm. or in the case uh, of a property that doesn't have any road frontage, what is to the front? So mm -hmm. we may have to clarify that in the regulations is if it's not clear what the front of the house is, if you have a corner, 
where you go by, say, the front door or something, we'll have to put some provision in there. Or, or the side of the property, I can think of, uh, you know, kind of forward. It's on the side of the front yard, basically, is what I'm thinking of. Right. Yeah. But I won't go any deeper with that at this point. We'll see. It's just stuff we look out for. Yeah. 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 Ames? Uh, no, just I think most do you find that most people that do opt to put it in the front tend to landscape it? Most do. It's very rare you see it in the front. Certainly, I would assume, and I'm, I've never been a yeah. propane tank refill guy. I would assume for oh, that it's probably easier to put it in the front yard <laughs> instead of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, There's usually two. Yeah. Right? If they're not burying it, when you get a new furnace installed, they'll always put two in now. So usually uh, you see the white screens kind of go up. Yeah, or, or they're embedded in a landscaping bed and have some <coughs> buffer. Right, so uh, what's interesting is... Bushes around it. Not do, always. Right, the question is, do we, nothing. do we want to allow for that? Or say, nope, it can't even be screened. Oh, I think we, we definitely want it, want it screened. No, no, we're right. saying we ban it from the front. We don't say front, but could be screened. Oh, no, no, not... No, I'm talking about even... But buried. Yeah. Oh, nothing very should be care. above. Nothing right. should be above. Okay. Uh, in the front yeah, yard. Okay. I agree with that. I, but so what? What he's asking is, if they put it in the front yard, is it okay to go in the front yard if it gets screened? And what you're above saying ground, is no, no way. No. Okay. That's right. what I'm saying. Too. Right. Okay. I'm yeah. just saying, you know, I'm sorry. screening the the hump that comes up over the top, screening that with landscaping. Well, like my my what. So three of my neighbors have them. Top. Three of my neighbors have them. One's got a fake rock on it. Mm -hmm. One's got nothing on it. It's just green. Mm -hmm. And then one, another guy's got one that's gray. And another one's got one that's literally yeah. almost in the front yard. And you can see from the street, and they have two geraniums that screen it. So it's being screened by a geranium. I see. Okay. Or a little box with that swallow and stuff. Okay. I don't call that screen. Can't but they be buried like septic tanks are buried? Can yes, they can, completely. but it's more expensive. you got to own it. To get it later? you got to own the tank? Yeah. And bury it. Oh, yeah. That's what you, the ones they're putting out on the sides of houses yeah. and rentals. When you my, get a furnace. Uh, well, my my mother in law has got the one that you're talking about that's five feet tall or six yeah, feet tall. Yeah, that's what we're talking about here. The 70 no, gallon. There's, they, they, they have the submarine ones. ones. The ones that look like submarines? Those are actually external ones of those? Correct. Yeah, right. Oh, God, the submarine one buried. Come to my house. I'll show you the one that's <laughs> above ground. <laughs> Me too. Can we go compare our submarines? <laughs> 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 this one's a great submarine. It's in the front yard. And it's legal, I guess. Yeah. Right. But this the new ray, and you could put it in your side yard, and it would still be quite, it could still be quite visible, but it would meet the regs because it would be um, not in front of the house. So I, it, it could be visible. I want, it, I want it set back from the front corner of the house to a degree end screen. If it's on the side here, I mean, because if it lines up with the front corner of the house, it's still in the side yard. But you know, you're technically in the front yard. It's like where my boat is. Yeah. Can we? Right. Can we enforce screening. We could. We could make it set it back from the corner, but. It'd be hard to be consistent with. Yeah. Screening. We don't really enforce anything to be screened in that. No, we, in, in the bay. There's a, there's a lot of above ground oil tanks in the bay. Because right, they're in a flood zone. Because they're in a flood zone. Mm -hmm. And they're all on the sides of the houses. And we approved every single one of them in the bay. It's a little bit, it gets more dicey because it has to be strapped to a concrete pad that's got to be like 18 inches thick. Right. So when the water f comes, it doesn't start floating, floating around because it can get lifted up. But you can, if you go to the bay, you <coughs> cannot see those on the street with oil screen. Do we mandate the screen, or do people just do that because they're ugly? It's it's a combination of both. I mean, I, there's not many people that want to see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have a two million dollar house in the bay. You don't want to see your neighbor's um, thing, but it's, it's it still has to be there. <coughs> That's correct. Okay. Can you ask Eric? I don't have anything else right now. Maybe not not in the front yard. Maybe okay. screen the front. Or or my my line is visible from the street. I mean, I mean, I think that's probably the way that it is. Like you said, it's on the corner. Mm -hmm. Great. So that's the issue. Um, we're, all, we're all, all in agreement on this pretty much, I think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what so you're so saying is, if it's on the side, it must be set back from the front corner of the house? Correct. Five feet, ten feet? 
five feet, ten feet, yeah, something like that. So you, well, you're you're only, the only problem with that is you do get into issues of getting the line into the furnace. That's why they're putting these on there. So the furnace. Well, my mother-in-law's my mother-in-law's is just for the stove. But the the ones they're installing now are for boilers that get converted Agreed. over. Agreed. So it's going to be having a minimum setback seems like it like it's a good idea, but that might end up being very onerous on the home if the furnace, which they can't really change a furnace location inside a house that's already built. They moved it at my mother-in-law's house. They did. Look how to meet your mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, they don't move them much. They're 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 right. Men, right? So they might not be. It might be too. You know, to move it back ten feet, and they're like, "Well, why can't we just put it three feet in?" But I mean, that the the, the the whole object of the idea is you don't want to see these things in the front of the house or from the street. Right. That's the whole idea. Right. right. I mean, if you want to screen it, you want to put bushes around it, you want to side it back. You know, they, they, my mother-in-law's house, it's. It's at the back corner of the house. How they fill it, that's the foggiest idea. But it's only for the stove, and he has a new stove in there. So he's filled it once in five years, I think. Um, but that's what we're kind of sort of asking. Okay. Is this subject to a public hearing? Yeah, well, it's a zoning regulation amendment, so we're going to have to have a public hearing. It'll probably be, right now, I think we're thinking June 4th, but we'll finalize the proposal next week. We'll start the legal notice process, et cetera. And have a hearing. Yeah. See what I happens. Believe this one doesn't get any questions. It's going to start with a lot, except for the <coughs> film the tank. Uh, Just do need to define front of house, as I said. Yeah. Okay. Might, might get Fantastic. Some Fantastic. All right. Next item on the agenda: um, informal discussion of 2026 Town Planner Conservation Development and the 2027 Affordable Housing Plan. Discussion of timing of required updates to the. 2016 plan <coughs> conservation development, the PDOC, and the 2022 Darren Housing Affording Plan. Um, I was on the commission that we did this, um, I guess, in 2016. Um, it takes a solid year to do it. Um, we hired an outside consultant to do it. Um, we had a little bit of an RFP process to pick the outside consultant. Um, at the end of the day, the consultant we had was fantastic. You probably all met him. His name is Glenn Calder. He, uh, from his company, is called Plan Metrics. Um, he must have had, I don't know, dozens and dozens of meetings, yeah. a public hearing in the auditorium. Um, he is, is, my understanding, not taking on this um, type of work anymore. Um, it is also very expensive. Generally, budgets for this for, I think, two years. It's Two and a half years. About, we have a the, the, mon the money. The money about you asked one year. You asked for like fifty grand. Another year, I think you asked for fifty grand. So yeah, fifty that. grand, seventy-five and twenty. So about one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is what it costs these days. As you said, it's about you know twenty meetings with the commission, whether it's a public hearing or getting feedback or whatever. So it's a lot of time in meetings, but it's a lot of behind the scenes writing, oh, visiting yeah, properties, nice. talking to me and Fred, researching. Etc. in terms of putting together a plan that covers all the topics that the state requires. And that's why I gave you the memo which has the state requirements, and you can see the state requirements are about three pages long, and they get longer all the time. <laughs> Is it ultimately a flat fee or a time fix? Well, I think that's what we're going to do with, uh, if we put out an RFP, is say, look, first of all, the commission has to decide what, what do you want for your plan? And we've done, since I've been here, four plans. If you don't have a copy of 2016, I can get you a hard copy. It's also on the web. This is the one we did in 2006. Uh, now 18 years old. It was a 1995 plan. There was a 1984 plan. And they all take a different look, a different take. Uh, some emphasize different things as times change. What's important a few years ago was intersection improvements. We were looking at this plan earlier today, back in 2006. They looked at improving a number of intersections. This plan, more on environmental, looked at a lot of capital facilities. You know, what do we need to do at the public works garage? What do we need to do to this building? So each one takes on a life of its own. We did acknowledge, Fred and I, when we spoke today, there is also in the background a Parks and Rec Master Plan, which was done in, I believe, 2018, which we gave you a copy of. 
I think the town is embarking on a great island master plan as we speak. They're working on hiring a consultant. That's a whole different thing. But it will be ultimately up to the commission in terms of where you want the emphasis of the plan to be, what, how you want the document to be, whether you want it to be short, long, heavy on data, heavy on graphics, a lot of maps, new policies, kind of what are you thinking about in terms of uh, what you want the future of the town to be and how you want to represent that, that to the public. Uh, lately, in this document especially, it talks about implementation. For each recommendation, who's going to be the person or group or agency that gets it moving along? So that was important. And I think what we can do also is get you links to the other plans of local communities so you can get a feel for, oh, I see what Greenwich did or New Canaan or Norwalk or Westport. Uh, saw the work that their consultant did, the format, the style, the look, the feel. So we can, as we start working on hiring consultants, it reflects what the commission wants. Certainly the state statutes allow for subcommittees or subgroups or new groups to prepare the plan, but ultimately the state statutes say the six of you are the responsible parties. So if it doesn't get done in time or it's not right, it's on you. So that's why I always recommend that you be the group that walks the consultant through it and gives feedback because if you delegate that to another group, who knows? We didn't even, when we did 2016, we didn't even have a subcommittee. It was just the six yeah. of you yeah. at yeah. Eight, yeah. one meeting a month for two months. I think PZ and H at the time was invited to each of those meetings. Uh, and it was just spend an hour with the consultant talking about a topic. What do you think? Here's some issues. Here's some, you know, what is likely to happen at the start is Fred and I will spend a day with the consultant driving around town looking at, okay, here's Cherry Lawn Park. Here's some of the issues related to Cherry Lawn. Here's where the affordable housing in town is. Here's where the public works garage is. Give them a feel for the community. Uh, I know when Glenn Chalder came by, what uh, caught his eye was the fact that Darien is bisected by I-95 and the railroad. And you can see that in the document. Like, seen a town so bisected that really affects drainage and access and all kinds of things in town. Just the way that Darien got developed. He also liked our rock walls. A lot of rock walls in Darien. He likes rock walls. Um, it, it, not every single, just for public knowledge, not every single town has an outside third party itself to do it. There are subcommittees in town. We have never, not, we, to my knowledge over the years I've been around, we've never really done any house. It's such a big document, an important document. It's better yeah. to have a yeah. person hired to do it than have a bunch of volunteers put it together. And so um, much of the work that you do is validated against the plan. Right. So right. It, constantly it, referencing. It, it's it's constantly it has to that linchpin has right. to be exactly right. the bedrock for the next ten years because you're constantly And I guess that's the, the first question is yeah. you know of the existing 2016 plan, what does the commission like? What yeah. do you think it, where do you think it's weak? Where do you think yeah. it's strong? Yeah. What parts do we, oh, let, let's pull that forward. That's great. That's good. That's good stuff. Let's keep it. What do you want to build on? Where do you think, oh, we, we can do better here? Yeah. And that's what we'll have to start talking about. Fred and I are working behind the scenes and tracking down consultants who are able and willing to do this work. There's, there's not a lot of them, and there's every, every single, there's 100 and what, 169 communities. And they're all trying to get Are they all doing it the same key? Yes. No, no, what happens is uh, the state has a list, and every community has to do it in 10 years. So on the state website, it's basically a, a, like a waiting list. Every 16. Who are the people that are yeah, overdue? And then who, who has to get theirs done in 2024? Who has to get theirs done in 2025? And we are on the 2026 list, because ours was, was in 2016. So we're 59. And every day that goes by, you kind of move up the list. Oh, well. And when did the Canaan last year there? Do you know? They are finishing theirs. I think is that what we saw, Fred? They're yeah. in the process of finishing yeah. theirs up. They're uh, we just look. If no, so theirs is new. So that would be theirs a is new. Reference document. For uh, us. Ridgefield's pretty new. Uh, new Canaan did theirs in 2014. This is their last one, so they're just finishing Finish up right now. now. Uh, Stanford was 2015, we were 2016, Westport 2017. Fairfield's just finishing theirs up now. 
So the, the big th well, two last points of what we'll move on is um, the big difference between like Darien and New Canaan and Darien and Ridgefield is the waterfront. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have, you know, massive amounts of waterfront the, the towns that match up with us I and mean, make everyone knows it's it's really um, Greenwich, Stanford, but they have a whole different issue. Westport, Fairfield, or you know, our paper. We use the that. coastal, and that's important because one of the aspects you have to cover is impacts on Long Island Sound. Right. For us, it's more important than say New Canaan because they don't front on Long Island Sound. Right. The the big thing that I would like to focus on as well <coughs> is I would really like to focus on access to the water. I mean, right now we only really have two beaches, plus now we have this island, so if you get more public access to the water. Um, by viewing or whatever you can do, that'd be great. So that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. Then the last thing I want to just mention was this consulting. Glenn Chawler met with like every little small subcommittee and commission and advisory yeah. board of town, including the one that blew my mind. It was like the Graves. There's a Graves commission. Monuments and ceremonies. <laughs> yeah, I think he sat in this room and took a steady stream of interviews and meet and greets. And, and those people that come in, the guy who was in charge of graves and historic sites, that guy came in here too and said, you know, this is what I want to do, and Clem, Clem was with us, and so then we listened, and then those two guys, but there's there's gazillion boards and commissions that he meets with. Yeah. So, anyway. so really, the role, the reason we're bringing it up tonight is we want to start getting consultant on board over the summer, okay. is request for proposals, select, we have the commission interview and select a consultant. So we can get started this year and get moving because, as Steve said, it's a multi-year process, and yeah. it, we really need I to be done. So we did the mission statement up front. And I think we did like the table of contents. Yeah, certainly that is That's what we do. helpful to kind of give a little organization to the consultant. But the first step is make sure everyone has a hard copy of this. If you don't, we'll get one out to you. Take a look online. Take a look at other communities, and kind of give us feedback. And we'll start. We'll get this along. Fantastic. Um, next item: deliberations and possible decision regarding the following: flood tide prevention application number 442, PL 24-7. Sean Sullivan Riley at 24 Church Street proposed to construct an addition and make alterations to and lift portion of the existing single-family residence on the property before related site development activities within the regulated area. Public hearing closed on March 26, 2024. So in our document packets, we received a draft of the existing resolution. Um, questions, comments, typos, scrivener's errors on this one. Um, again, I was not at this meeting. Um, I read some of the materials, but I'm going to actually recruit, not vote on it. I'll look at abstain. But I can still um, ask any questions we have on this item. Um, what have you found, Mr. Typo guy? Well, the only thing I That's didn't, did, I didn't see any typos on here. Um, the only thing I didn't see, and I don't know if we want to add it in the findings, was just a mention, because we talked about in part three, the HVAC unit being up on the, the uh, pad. Um, but this is one of the weird ones where they have a area that is almost like a pit that's going to be guaranteed to flood, if you remember. And they have they have um, sumps in there, but they don't have any generators at all. And it's not required that they have generators, which we went over in the meeting, but it's odd that they have a place they know is designed to flood, right? So they're pulling the house up, they're leaving this sort of like concrete kind of pit with, with floodgates. And they have sumps there, but when we need the sumps, they're almost certainly not going to have the juice to run them. You mean some pumps, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. got you. So they've got no generator. So you want something in the just resolution? A, just a finding say. saying, hey, it, you know, the applicant did not, you know, while not required, the applicant did not submit plans for a generator. Just so that when, you know, they go to sell this house in 10 years, the next person looks at it and is like, why isn't there a generator? Yeah. You know, like, is there a spot for a gen for pencil generator that's out of the flood zone? No, it looks, well, no, the whole property is in the flood zone. I yeah. think the key here, if you look at the AC unit, if you look at the survey on page one, page one and then on page two, it, said, it says relocated AC unit to be screened and elevated. Uh, basically, they're pulling it in to meet the setbacks and, and to, it to put it closer to the house. 
know, but where it is, it's kind of like the middle of the backyard. And to put a generator, they'd have to put it right next to it uh, with some bollards around it, probably, because it's right where their extra parking space. So that's pretty much where it's got to go, because it wouldn't meet the setbacks anywhere else. So it's probably going to have to be next to the AC unit. All right. So I'm not saying we need to require it. I would just like to see it noted in the findings. There are some pumps, there is no generator. And a generator can be put. Can be placed next to the AC unit so some future tenant will want to do it. Some kind of language like that. Not a requirement, but just something to note in case somebody looks at this because yeah. I think this is the first one we saw yeah. that doesn't have a generator in an area that's going to flood. Designed to flood, they're lifting the house to specifically alleviate the flood. Well, maybe they can make the platform a little bigger. Bigger and put it next to it. Yeah. Because yeah. you can make the platform bigger, correct? Because, I mean, generators are getting smaller. Yeah, the issue here is they're over on building coverage. They got a variance yeah. for coverage because they're, believe it or not, 25% coverage. So that, that's going to be a sensitive design getting that platform just right <clears throat> so it doesn't count towards building coverage. So you, you, if you rate, if you make the platform bigger, then it's going to make it more. Yeah, we, we give a little bit. So, but you know, do they have a hardship? Yeah, I think they have a hardship here that maybe they could squeeze one in. Okay, Jamie, anything on this one? I agree, Adam. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure they would have told us if they were going solar, but there was always that prospect, I suppose. But anyway, sure, make them out here, see what's. And, uh, so you want to tell them where yeah, to put it, what sure. line at them? Um, you want to get this finding area? Somewhere around three. And stormwater management? No, before stormwater management. So it is on the CBA, CBA variance. Variants. So yeah, maybe. So maybe we move three up above CBA variance and just add a sentence to the end of three? Yeah. No generator is proposed yeah. on the plans. Yeah. The, 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 commission, the commission questioned whether they were in, intent to install a generator. The applicant, you know, said not at this time. You know, like, or, or it was discussed. No, no generator right. was proposed. Yeah. No generator was or proposed. Or something. Was yeah. proposed by applicant yeah. at this time? Yeah. You don't need that this Pretty time. Really no picture is that result. Somebody's might someday look to us to say, why didn't you ask for it? Exactly. Yeah. Potential purchasers not going to look to us to come that one. Anyway. Right. And, we, and what we say here in condition A, any HVAC unit and or generator will need to be at least one foot above the base value elevation. Yeah. Uh, any proposed Okay. okay. All right. So that's it. Um, motion to um, approve as edited or as revised. Yeah. Amy makes a motion to confirm second. George, you in the game? Sure. George is in the game. Okay. George is second. Right in <laughs> Amy made the motion. George is second. All in favor? Four to, Four zero. to zero to one. Got it. Fantastic. All right. It is now nine o'clock. Um, Deliberations on a public hearing closed on April 9th. Um, we did, we left one hearing open and we closed another hearing, but we're not going to deliberate on that because we're still waiting for um, Mr. Kenneth's item, so we're going to pass on that. Um, the chairman's report is just that I think the, um, the Darien Heights project, which is also known as Palmer's, also known as Vicaro's, that one's I think it's reached its maximum height of, of the structure. Um, so it's up to the second floor. It is going to be a tall building, so we are going to get feedback on that. I don't know if any of you guys were on the commission at the time that was approved, but it's going to come. <laughs> I know it will. Mm -hmm. um, the traffic will be more concerned when we put that second one in. Um, no more. There's no traffic lights going in. But it's no, but they're making that intersection a little more longer. Yeah. Now. That's, where, that's where the complaints have come. Um, but we, we just we, we took care of that. Yeah. Um, Corbin phase two is well underway. They stopped doing their rock chipping. They're down as deep as they can go. They're going to probably start pouring concrete pretty soon. Um, they're doing very well on pre-leasing the um, 
the office space of the project. And you know, the, I think most of the retail space is already leased, mm -hmm. and they just have apartments that will lease whenever they get finished. Um, the other item that I heard was that um, three parklands sold from the existing applicant um, who has since passed away, um, and that sold to a new owner that is a developer that's out of Greenwich, um, well capitalized, so that project should start moving soon. Um, and I'll add another, um, another multi-family building to our town. Um, and what was the other item? I think that's pretty much it. Have you have any updates on any of the pre-applications or on the um, car wash? Car wash is likely to come back to the commission in May or June. Um, and the Thorndall Circle redevelopment is going to the Environmental Protection Commission, uh, I want to say uh, April 24th, plus or minus, I think that sounds about right, to start uh, with the work near the wetlands, and the next step after that would be likely coming to you in May, June, or July for a zone change. Okay, to put on the overlay? put on the overlay, and then they wanted some relief for the garages close to I-95. Right, they said, yeah, that was the big application. So those are the big applications you're going to see. But they're not contemplating different mixed use or anything like that? No, all residential. Oh, yeah. So those... They, that be, intent hasn't changed. It's not changed. Yeah, and, and for public record, um, I will be recusing myself from that application when it does come in. Um, and so we have to make it... Um, um, I can always speak for myself, but we def always have to have four people at those meetings. So if there's a reason you're going to be out, then sure we know in advance. I am also recusing myself in my original. Okay. So, so everybody's got to be tight. Yeah. yeah. So everybody's got to be tight. So you need four, we need four or four since two of us are out, um, which is important. I think, I think that's it. There's a couple other minor stuff on my list, but I think we're okay. Procedurally, do we have the ability to you have to notice if it's a Zoom meeting. Like I'm just thinking about in, when people start to travel in the summertime, if somebody's physically not here and you meet everybody here. However, we would need to advertise it. So you're yeah, right. We if, we want, if we say, you know what, yep. someone's going on vacation, we need that fourth person. Yeah. And if it has to be Zoom, we can certainly do that. Yeah. We just have to notice it in yep. beforehand. How much How, notice does it? Usually two to three weeks, because if we want to put it in legal notice, the legal notice goes two weeks before the meeting. So for the meeting on April 23rd, the legal notice just went yesterday, May 11th. No, no that's not right. All right, so with that, with that said, before. can you, do we have the capability yet to do a hybrid? Uh, we could do that as well, a little tricky. So actually, no, for the hearing on the 23rd, the notice went out yesterday, the 8th. So if, as long as we know two weeks in advance, we'll be fine. So, so if, if you know, we're having a meeting and all of a sudden Adam's, Adam has to stay home because his wife's going to go take care of his mother-in-law. You know, and he wants to take his meeting from home. Can we pivot that quickly? Or can you do the notices, can you do the notices in advance? I think we could. Yeah, I think we could. I, I don't know that, I don't know that it necessarily needs to be noticed. And, I think if you're doing all Zoom, it needs to be noticed. But if you're doing in a room and then adding off, Hybrid yeah. later, we could do that because at least that way people know where the room is. Go. Right. right, you can't tell them show up in room 206 and have the meeting in a, place. Right. in a different place. But if you say in 206, everyone shows up and someone's logged in on the screen, that would be okay. okay. Okay, so if Adam has to be home and three people are here, then we can be home work. and still and still still not a quorum. The hard part is if someone is sick. There's yeah. 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 But if if your if your kid's sick, you can stay home with your kid. But you still is there your is there a way along those lines? If we do do that, I'm not saying I think that's a likely scenario. Can we make it so that the public has to show up and can't be on Zoom? Because if you remember the Parkland yes. nightmare of the yes. not people just yelling, people unmuting, oh, yeah, it, it got right. to be awful. So. It's, I wouldn't mind if we could be remote, but if if it is going to be a public hearing and the public wants to make comment, they have to show up in person. They can't just sign into the Zoom meeting and start yelling. Mm. 
I guess we could you just get into a sticky situation there. Check check on that because that's statutes. that's yeah. to your exact point. That's why I do not want to have public hearings over, over Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll I mean, see what we can do. We'll start investigating. But in that library where right you've got you know all of the commissioners but one because of an right. extenuating circumstance just calling in. Yeah. So. Still just look into it. Yeah, yeah we'll start dial, researching. What about it? instead of Zoom dial-ins, right? Like lawyers can dial into court. Or there, well, there there would be a way to, uh, with certain whether it's Zoom or GoToMeeting. Okay. Zoom's a little easier. We could mute everyone. Right. GoToMeeting wasn't very conducive yeah. to that. So I think we we switched. We dropped the yeah, we, we got rid of that. Yeah, GoToMeeting. Yeah. Yeah. So that might work a little better because yeah. you've all been to seminars where nobody can speak, yeah. and then right. they allow people in one by one. Okay. Yeah. okay. Next upcoming meetings, April 23rd and May 7th. Anything special? April 23rd is a very full is public hearing night. Uh, we're going to hear about the Hanson Road Bridge replacement. We're going to hear about uh, the Board of Ed looking to park, uh, I'll call it mini school buses or suburbans. Uh, one at a handful at 35 Leroy at the Board of Ed building. Others. And this came before us last time, and we didn't ever say like we really got to see this for the bus parking. They, well, they, they wanted to move it from like six to eight buses. Yeah, so now it's and going from eight to ten, and we said, you know what? Let's do it again. You, you well, know, we we felt as staff, look, yeah, what's two? What's another two? What's another two? And then so has the number, number has the number changed? The number is going from no, no. six to eight. Has it been approved? No, that's uh, the hearing is yeah. the twenty third. Well, the number, I mean, the number on their applications comes from six to eight. Right, it's been approved as six. Has the Correct. Board of Finance approved yeah. it? Board of Finance, uh, the word is I'm getting that they will approve it. Okay. We will know by the 23rd. Got it. Um, uh, certainly, it's 10 buses on two different locations? There's splitting them eight up. On yes, one and two on eight, eight at Thornville Circle oh. and two at 35 Lee Road. Two additional to the ones that are Two additional. Are some of them sprinters now? Though? Yeah, I mean, we'll hear more about what you know, what's a school bus, what's a mini school bus, what's a sprinter, what's a suburban, what's a, and hopefully they'll bring pictures. They're not full-size school buses at either location. Oh, yeah. So, so when we call them buses, it's not a big right yellow school bus. A, right now it's a server, it's the suburban, is that right? Right. So if you go to Leroy between right, right, now and right, the right, hearing, right, you'll see what they park there. there. Yeah. And there's six bases set aside, and they're white suburbans, and it says Board of Ed on the side or something like that. So, so I have to be here on March on March 23rd. That's a big a April. April. And then um, Hanson Road Bridge, two Board of Ed applications, regrading application for 23 Old Front Road, another regrading application, working the coastal area for, uh, I think it's 224 Long Neck. Uh, we have one hearing that we're pushing into May. We'll have the continuation from tonight. Full public hearing. Mm -hmm. okay. And then what's on May 7th? May 7th, we're going to have two minor, what I would consider minor public hearings. Mm -hmm. One is a regrading application that was done without permits, so it's an after the fact permit. The other one was 50 Holly Lane was also a regrading. Yeah. Uh, there might be one or two that kind of fall on to May 7th. But I might be absent on that one. You, you're on that one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 50 Coach Lamp, possibly. Possibly. 70 Narotan Avenue, 50 Holly Lane. Yep. Um, that one's yeah. going to fill up quite And May 7th is also more discussion and possible decision on ADUs. We're going to okay. have a draft resolution. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's yeah. That was what? That's May 7th? May 7th. Okay. Fantastic. Any other business regard? Two thirds vote of the commission. Any other business for tonight? We're good. Mm -hmm. All right. With that said, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Anything else? You say anything? Adam makes a motion. Uh, Jamie makes a second. Any discussion? Sure. Okay. All in favor? Let's discuss what time it is. Shall we? There you go. Hearing's not closed. Thank you, Karen. It is nine fifteen.